be taking you on a journey to Tanzania, a country based in East Africa, and visit the islands of Zanzibar. In these islands, we'll meet rural women who 15 to 20 years ago were not allowed to leave their houses, even only if they had to go for a funeral or a wedding of a family member or a neighbor. We'll meet rural women who were so bound by the culture that they had to ask permission from their husbands to do everything that they wanted to do. Culturally, Zanzibari women depended solely on their husbands to bring home all that is required for the household. They had no way of getting cash income. They had no power of speech, no negotiating power. The culture of Zanzibar did not allow women to talk in front of men. All this changed one day, and the change agent was not a person, but something that no one would have imagined. This change was seaweed farming. The lives of these rural women changed when they started to cultivate seaweed 15 to 20 years ago. Imagine a Zanzibari woman who was not allowed to leave her house, standing in front of her husband and telling him that she wants to go out there and farm seaweed in the ocean. This was unheard of in Zanzibar for many reasons, but one big reason was that the ocean used for fishing was purely a male-dominated business. But these women wanted to farm seaweed so they had a hard time asking for permission to go out and farm seaweed. Some of them even faced divorce threats. But the women saw this opportunity to earn cash income, and they seized it. With time, their husbands gave in, especially when they saw that their wives could bring in money in the household. As they farmed the seaweed, the women got money, they got cash income. They got really good money. And as the, talk, the saying goes, money talks. So these rural women joined the hierarchy of breadwinners of the families. Now, what is this seaweed we are talking about? Seaweed is a plant that grows naturally in the ocean. And Tanzania started to farm it 20 years ago just like other countries, Philippines, Indonesia. The seaweed is exported to France, Denmark, USA. When there, a gel is extracted from the seaweed and used in a number of industries, such as cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, food, even textile industry. A good example of seaweed usage is the toothpaste. It is used every day, but it remains soft. This is because of the seaweed that is put inside. In Tanzania, there are two types of seaweeds that are farmed. One seaweed has a higher price because the gel extracted from it is of higher quality. Unfortunately, 15, 10 years ago, this seaweed farming has been affected by climate change. The women can no longer farm the higher valued seaweed. Increased surface seawater temperature has caused die-off of the seaweed. My research has focused on working with these rural women to look for methods that can be used to farm the higher-valued seaweed. Recently this year, in July, I finished experimenting on a method that these rural women can use to produce the higher-valued seaweed. When it is disseminated, this method will be used by the rural women. My research has also focused on adding value to the lower-valued seaweed by producing seaweed evaluated products. So in 2006, I started to train the women on how to produce seaweed evaluated products. When I told them that they can produce products from seaweed, they were surprised. They looked at me as if I was joking or something. When I told them that they can make seaweed soap, they said, soap? 
how can seaweed be made into soap? And when I told them that they can even eat seaweed, they laughed at me. Maybe they, think I, they thought I was joking. But as I continued to train them, they changed their mindset and they realized, aha, so we can actually use the seaweed that we produce to make seaweed products. So by, by doing so, they made a variety of products. They made seaweed soap. They made body cream. And they made seaweed powder. By selling these high-end products, the women got more money than they would have gotten by just farming. I will give you examples of these women whose lives have changed because of farming seaweed. One of these women is Safia Hashim. Safia is based in Mwelewa village, southwest coast of Zanzibar. I didn't know Safia yet, but I knew some women who lived in the same village. Safia has built a beautiful house. She has even managed to put tiles on the floor. With money that she gets from her business, she has bought her husband a fishing boat. Now imagine a Zanzibar woman buying a fishing boat for her husband. What a change. Safia has money to travel around to go to trade exhibitions, trade fairs, business meetings, not only in Tanzania, but in other countries such as Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, Uganda. She has trained her children and they work with her. In the village, Safia has become a trainer and a leader of other women. We have Amina Hamisi. She's also from Bueleo village. I knew Amina for a long time because she has been working with me in my research work. Amina is a seaweed seller. She buys seaweed from her fellow women and sells to exporters at a higher price. She earns $700 per month. This is way higher than two to $300 that she would have earned by selling seaweed. She has even managed to mobilize her fellow women to start a small credit system and a revolving fund for their own loans. It is not only the individuals whose lives have changed because of farming seaweed. There are also groups of women. In northern Zanzibar, in a village called Kidoti, there is a group of women who have organized themselves into 20 members. This is the first group that I trained on how to, to, farm, to, to produce seaweed products. They are the ones who laughed at me when I said that they can make a seaweed product. Today they are, they are marketing these products and they are getting cash income. And their income has indeed increased tremendously. They have built their own working premise and recently they have installed electricity. Before I wind up, I'll give you an example of another lady. Her name is Tatu Suleiman. She lives in Chukwani in Zanzibar. I did not know Tatu at all, but I met her when she started to produce value-added products. Tatu is selling seaweed soap, body cream, and she gets enough money not only to cater for her daily use, but also to go to trade exhibitions, meetings, and all that she wants, and she pays herself. Tatu is now an economically liberated woman. These are just examples of the women who have managed to change their lives. Some of them talk publicly saying that the trainings that they received from I and my colleagues have completely changed their lives. An example is Safia. She says that openly. So now what we see in Zanzibar, we see women who have left their houses. They have gone out there to farm seaweed in the ocean to the markets to sell the seaweed products. They no longer stay indoors and wait for their husbands. We see women who are earning cash income. The money that they get is equal to what their husbands are earning, and some of them even get higher income than that of their husbands. We see women who now go to talk to men and women and other people. 
they are no longer bound by the culture that forbids them to talk in front of the men. We see women who now have become part of the breadwinners of the family because of the cash that they get from seaweed farming. What a change. Imagine how a Zanzibari woman has changed. These women now can cater for the household needs. The women now have money power. These women now have the power of speech. They have become leaders. They have become trainers of other women. Indeed, these women, I'll say again, they have power of money and power of speech. Thank you.